point you're sort of like, what just happened? So why don't we just all just give, you know, we need, we need, a, we need a little bit of a primal scream or some kind, you know. Just to wake up. Can we do that? I'm an avant-garde theater director in New York. Why don't we just scream your head off right now? Are you ready? Out just yet, because we're gonna we're gonna do that again in a minute. That's just that was just rehearsal. So look, why are we here today? What? Yeah, but really, we are in New York City. We've got a moratorium on gas drilling, isn't that right? In the state, we actually have the majority opinion in New York State is against gas drilling. You are. You are in the majority. This is not some kind of fringe protest. They went out and polled New York State, and they discovered that upstate, there were more people opposed to fracking than in New York City. New York City, New York City depends on the water in the area that they want to frack, one of the areas they want to frack, and in New York City, is a little bit wishy-washy on this. It's like, no fracking is winning by like 10%. Upstate is winning by like 19%. So what do we, we have to do? You have to catch up, that's right. Thank you. you gotta bring more people here. This is good, but we need a lot more people here, right? So after today, I want your commitment to go out and talk to five or 10 people, and make every one of you, and make sure, not just that you talk to them about fracking, but that you get a commitment from them to come to the next one of these. Because there will be a next one of these. Because the truth is, the truth is, you're in the majority, we have a moratorium right now, but the moratorium is expiring, and our state government is not listening to the majority. Many of us think, oh well, maybe they actually heard us. Well, if they heard us, then why didn't they extend the moratorium? Why did State Senate refuse to bring those bills to the floor? Why hasn't Cuomo made a speech about this? Why hasn't he weighed in on this? Now he's sitting there somewhere in some room in Albany. Too bad for that. I, sorry, for anybody who came from Albany. Um, and trying to figure out what to do on this. He could play the hero or he could play the villain. But I'm reading the tea leaves. I don't think this is going our way right now. I think we don't have enough people here because we are lulled into a sense of complacency. Because we have the majority, which means we've won if we want to win. If we want to win, we can win. But I'll tell you something else. We have to look to the history of social movements. When I'm not here to tell you about fracking contamination, or how bad the water gets, or the air pollution, or the trucks. You know all that stuff. Don't you know all that stuff? You watched the movie. <laughs> We're getting really good at explaining hydrofracking from a technical point of view. It's like, well, the well goes down at 5,000, 8,000 feet, and then it turns this way, and there's kind of toxic chemicals. The chemicals are listed on the back of this t-shirt, and that's awesome. But what we need on the back of this t-shirt is the history of social movements in America. On the next t-shirt, this is a good t-shirt, nothing against this t-shirt. But what we need to learn from is the civil rights movement. And what we need to learn from is the women's suffrage movement. Because the movement for green power, for renewable energy, is the next movement like those movements. That's what this is, that's what you're a part of, that's what this is right now. And I know you're hearing a different tone from me than you may have heard in the movie, where I kind of talk very quietly and say things like this. But that's because I've spent a year and a half on the road going to 150 cities across America watching this thing build. And let me tell you, there are millions of people out there who are standing right with you. who are standing shoulder to shoulder. All we need is for that power to manifest itself because that's where the power actually is. And none of those social movements won without two things. One, massive protest, we're getting there. And two, civil disobedience. Now, I want, 
I want a commitment from you guys. Because I want to think six months down the road, a year down the road, two years down the road, what if this doesn't go our way? What if Tony Avella's bit, ban bill, and thank you Tony, doesn't pass? What if they start drilling? What happens then? Exactly, stand in front of the trucks. Stand in front of the trucks. Blockade the well sites. They are blockading well sites in Australia. And they are winning. And they are winning. That is how you win. So I want you to go home and rent a movie called The Freedom Riders. Also at Sundance, a fantastic movie about what happened to get the, the, the bus stations desegregated in the South. The Congress on Racial Equality sent uh, uh, down people from both races on those buses and they disrupted and they were beaten. Their bus was blown up. They were jailed and they sent down wave after wave after wave until those laws were changed. And that's how it happened. When you look back at it, it looks like it was inevitable, right? It's inevitable that those laws changed in America. When people 100 years from now look back at the, at the demise of fossil fuels in America, they'll think it was inevitable. But it won't be inevitable unless we do that. If they start drilling, wave after wave after wave of us have to come, stand in front of the trucks, and if Governor Cuomo wants to send us to jail, then he'll send us to jail. And that's the way it is. So I want your commitment today to do that. Sign up for that. This is a sunny day on a Saturday in New York City. <laughs> we could be selling hot dogs, you know. <laughs> what, what? We could be getting married, you know. But what I want here, I want to hear your commitment to go on those buses. It's not that far away. I'll be there. Get in front of those trucks, get in front of those rigs, get mentally prepared, because it might come to that. And <laughs> it's a good way to live. And, you know, just because Governor Cuomo did a good thing last night, doesn't mean he doesn't get a call from us this morning. Right? You want to call Governor Cuomo? I got his number right here. You can call him right here, right now. Ready? Let's see, Governor. Okay. You want the number? Why don't you put it in your phone? Everybody get out your phone. Everybody get out your phone. You already did. 518-474-8390. Let's call him and put him on speaker. Okay, we're leaving a message. Governor Cuomo. This is Josh Fox. I'm here with the crowd in Foley Square. And, and we, we need you to stop. We need you to ban fracking in New York State right now.